Bon, comme vous savez, ce soir, c'est nos deux ans. C'est les deux ans de cercle. Alors, je vous propose... Je vous propose de chanter avec nous, si vous voulez bien. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux Merci beaucoup. C'est toujours un plaisir d'organiser ces soirées. Je peux vous dire qu'on a toujours super hâte et ce soir on était vraiment tous super impatients de vous recevoir au château de Fontainebleau. Vous êtes un public énorme, même sous la pluie. Bravo à vous Et merci et bravo au château de Fontainebleau qui nous refait confiance et qui nous accueille ce soir. Du prix pour eux Bon, et ces gâteaux, on va les partager avec vous. On va les mettre derrière, là, vous pouvez venir manger avec nous. On les met juste là. Et pour euh, les gens qui sont en ligne, restez en ligne, je vais interviewer Dubfire dans quelques secondes. Et je vous demande de faire un maximum de bruit pour Timmy Boy qui reprend les platines. Hey, thank you. <laughs> All right. So you can speak really here because otherwise we, we won't be able yes. to. Well, thank you very much, Ali, for this uh, amazing set. Are we on camera? Yes, we are on camera. Okay, we're on camera. So the mics, thank you. Uh, they work. Yeah. Everyone okay? Everyone okay? okay? Yeah. Yes. Ça va? Yes. Ça va? Yeah. <laughs> So thank you very much, uh, the fire for this set. I think people loved it, even if it was raining, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was I was kind of kind of taking my cues from the environment, which um, you know, like a lot of us DJs, were always thrust into, you know, uh, controlled environments, nightclubs, warehouses. You know, we're in enclosed spaces, airports, hotels, uh, airplanes. Uh, so whenever you have like an opportunity to play, kind of against the architecture or the landscape, or nature. Uh, it kind of instills in you, um, I don't know, a different way of kind of expressing yourself musically. Uh, you're kind of expressing yourself musically. Obviously, you have the crowd in front of you, but yeah. you're, you're trying to play against the landscape, against the backdrop, and that's what I tried to do today. And, and I suppose you already played in some iconic places like here. What was your like your best memory? Yeah, I had a lot of people actually ask me tonight if uh, I played any, you know, really any tonight ca castles <laughs> or, yeah. or you know first things, castle things of this nature. Yeah, yeah. No, I play I played in igloos at the top of mountains before. I played in caves. Oh, nice. Um, I played uh, in in any kind of environment that you can imagine, but I've never quite played uh, a place that has such a an incredible sense of history yeah. as this. I was talking to some people earlier, and I heard that Napoleon actually. Yeah. On the steps here, yeah, exactly. said the his steps. goodbyes, uh, which is incredible when, when you're here. So prior to starting, I was having conversations with different people, and they were kind of giving me a sense of the history of the place, and that kind of informed the kind of set that I played tonight. So I was really happy to, to have that you know, opportunity to interact with the fans prior to my set.
that's nice. <laughs> and uh, or you you um, you usually play in longer sets, I guess. Tonight yeah, your yeah. set was one hour. Uh, um, yeah, but you know, minutes. for some reason, it felt um, like time felt elastic tonight for some strange reason. I have maybe no idea. because there was a sunset, right? It, it could have been the sunset thing. It could have been, um, you know, it could have been like the fact that we were surrounded by such incredible history and nature. You kind of became immersed in it, you became lost in it, and that kind of, you know, dissolved that sense of time that yeah. we typically have like in a, in a festival environment or a club environment. You know? Nice. Um, and I also wanted to ask you what happened to the Grammy awarded duo Deep Dish? I gave it to my mother. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually took my mother to the awards and, uh, you know, like for a lot of Persians, um, it was uh, a real, you know, defining moment, you know, um, And they were very proud of us. And, and for me, it was like, okay, it's like a bucket list thing. You know, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I have certain goals. I achieve those goals and then I move on. I really don't look back. I don't, I'm not very nostalgic. Um, I don't like to reflect. I'm, you know, constantly living in the present and the future. And after your really successful career, you have, you. Do, you, do, you st do you still have goals? Yeah, yeah. I have what I have are your I next goals? <laughs> I have a lot of goals. I think I want to be a chef one day. I don't know. It's, it's really it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I have a lot of musical goals. I have a lot of ideas that I haven't really like fleshed out yet. Um, I still feel like um, now where I'm kind of uh, entering the next decade of my solo career. I celebrated the last decade uh, last year. Uh, I'm, I you know I have a blank canvas. I I can paint it any any way I want mm. and that feels really liberating whereas towards the last few years of my career I felt kind of boxed in to give people what they expect of, of me as an artist and how I evolved from the from the uh, early days but now I feel like um, I have uh, kind of a new landscape a new horizon uh, a new approach to experimentation to taking myself outside of my comfort zone and, and creating something mm. unusual and different and exciting for me. Yeah. yeah. And so people, if you have questions online, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. I will choose just, choose just one or two for Dubfire. And some people just asked me when we yeah. were coming here, yeah. can you ask him why Dubfire? Why, why the name Dubfire? Um, I, you know, I was a, a huge fan of Dub Reggae. I still am. And uh, Dub Fire was uh, the name of a Lee Scratch Perry song. Lee Scratch Perry is one of the, the legendary kind of dub reggae pioneers. Yeah. And um, I think Oswald also did a song called Dub Fire. I don't know if it was a cover of a Lee Scratch Perry song, but I thought coming from DC, um, where a lot of the DJs tended to use their first names, you know, mm. a lot of them were Middle Eastern. Yeah. They had a big international community uh, in DC. And uh, a lot of the DJs were international and they used like their ethnic first names. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be someone that could be defined by my ethnic first name. I wanted to retain kind of a mysterious um, personality. Um, and at the end of the day, I was named Dubfire after a reggae song, but I was, you know, coming from Persian background and, yeah. and uh, you know, immigrant in, in, in you in, come from in Iran a, right I, I came from Iran yeah so I think it threw a lot of people um, you know off like they they couldn't quite figure out how to uh, and maybe that's the, the you know kind of the characteristic of my career yeah. like not being pigeonholed I didn't want to be pigeonholed I think whether I knew it or not from an early age and uh, that's probably why I picked that name okay and and you are uh, talking about Iran and your Persic uh, origins. Are you still connected in some way to Iran? Yeah, to I've Iran? never gone back since I left in 1979. Oh, um, really? I'm connected through certain family members, and I hope one day um, we'll have a regime change where uh, freedom of expression, because I'm an artist and I believe in freedom of expression, no matter how controversial or how, how far you push the boundaries. And uh, the fact that you can't express yourself in that manner in Iran in my birth country is uh, is a problem for me yeah. and it's it's something that I hope the younger generation uh, who uh, you know are the majority uh, will will try to change you know okay uh, I'm just checking there is question I will yeah. 
Oh, okay, so the first question I see because there are a lot of questions. So question from Zabo Peter, which DJ is your idol? <laughs> My idol. Your idol, well, sorry. Being that I'm in France uh, and I was just talking to somebody yesterday about Laurent Garnier. Laurent, yeah, Laurent Garnier, Garnier like um, is someone I've idolized since before I even knew I wanted a career in music. He was always coming to Washington DC every year playing for a good friend of mine and his business partner who eventually became my lawyer and he's still my lawyer 25 30 years later um, and they allowed me even though i was underage to come at the beginning of the night yeah while the employees are sweeping the floors and getting ready and laurent would insist on playing an open to close set i come from an era of uh that was just how you played you, you there was no hour and a half or hour or peak time slot or whatever a DJ would play yeah. any club or any kind of event from the beginning to the end. And Laurent was, um, you know, the defining G DJ for me, I think, uh, European DJ especially, who came and who really, to this day, if you watch him play, you know, it's like watching um, a classic rock musician in a Woodstock documentary, you know? Like you watch musicians today on stage mm -hmm. and everything looks choreographed. And then you watch like Woodstock and you see how the blood, sweat and tears of the craft comes out uh, in, in their face and how they sweat and how they move. And Laurent is the embodiment in electronic music of that, you know, okay. that quintessential figure. And that's something that I always really felt like was my calling. And um, to this day, Laurent, I never thought I, I could call him a friend um, and, uh, you know, colleague but uh, you know Laurent instigated I guess uh, a desire to pursue a career in music yeah. in me from a from a very early age and and uh, he's someone that I owe a great debt to, debt to. okay yeah great um, <coughs> just okay so people are really uh, happy <laughs> about this stream <laughs> okay so last question and then Uh, so, a question from Rutong, who do you enjoy playing B2B with the most? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of known to, to be like a back-to-back -back king. Um, <laughs> everyone's different. They're all different. The great thing about a back-to-back -back set is it really takes you outside of your comfort zone and it forces you to follow the other person. And the best B2Bs are the ones where there's... It's like two musicians improvising on stage. Uh, there's no script. You don't come at it with a playlist, you know, in, in the way that we all do, like when we yeah. are playing solo. Um, so you're really defined by how the other person follows you, how the crowd interacts with what you're playing, with what they're playing. And sometimes the most incredible feeling in the world is to be challenged by another musician. Mm. Um, you know, I'm always challenged when I'm working with session musicians in the studio, but in a in a kind of DJ context it's great when uh, for instance Seth Troxler is someone that I could never in a million years try to figure out what he's going to play next and that keeps me really interested and yeah. really excited so he's someone I really enjoy playing with I think he enjoys playing with me because he likes to see how I follow him because I have this image of being like the techno guy but but I'm much older than Seth and I come from that kind of Laurent Garnier era as well. So I have the history, the whole uh, early house music history and techno history behind me. So uh, Seth and I really enjoy playing together. So to answer his question, okay. yeah, I enjoy playing with <laughs> Seth a lot. You and of course, Richie Houghton, because Richie is just uh, boundary pushing yeah. when it comes to technology and stuff. So he's someone on the opposite side of the spe spectrum that I, um, I feel most connected to, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. The thank player. you. It Thanks was for having me. It was great. Yeah. My first time with Circle. First time for the two years. Yeah. So yeah. a really important uh, yeah. date for us. And we were, we were honored and happy to get thank to, you so much. to have I you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank and um, I also, oh yeah, yeah. The mystery box, right? It's the, the mystery, mystery box. box. So yeah. the mystery box is a little gift. You guys are full of surprises today. Yeah, <laughs> full of surprises. Well, it's yeah. a birthday. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, a little <laughs> gift from us. So it's, oh, sorry. It's the shirt, a special uh, sweatshirt with the ah, two amazing. years of circle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is the perfect gift for the, uh, the chilly, air-conditioned summer uh, months. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. On all the flights that I'm going to be taking. So thank you very much for this. I'm <laughs> You're really welcome. happy to, 
to, to be a part of uh, your two year anniversary. And well, yeah, the, we are really happy yeah. to. Thank <laughs> you so much. And and also um, <coughs> a More little gifts. gift from the castle of ah, Fontainebleau. Amazing. Thank and you I so also much. I also wanted to thank uh, the the castle of Fontainebleau because tonight they they trusted us again. Yeah. Um, Everyone was pretty behaved. Yes, I didn't see anybody. Uh, yes. like nobody was disrespectful. I think everybody felt that sense of uh, exactly. respect in history. In history, place. exactly. Oh. So thank you very much to us. Oh, and and there is this umbrella from the castle. Oh. Also. That's going to come in handy because yeah. <laughs> the most amazing thing about tonight is that it was raining, but nobody left. No, Everyone nobody. Everyone braved the rain. and Yeah. 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 It, it was, it's, it's, it's still I raining. think, better. Yeah, it's still <laughs> raining. It's still, still raining. Yeah. So thank you very, mu very much to, yeah. to you, all you guys uh, online. You were, uh, I, I didn't check, but you are really, really a lot tonight. <coughs> so thank you, thank you very much to, to you. And thanks to our partners. They will come up on the screen and once again thank you to Chateau de Fontainebleau for their warm welcome and see you next Monday for another surprise. Bye bye. Merci beaucoup. Merci. <laughs>